Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel Crafty Concepts with Erin. I'm Erin and today I have a scrapbook layout for you featuring this fun Boo Crew special from Close to My Heart. This is going on now through the month of October and as you can see it's a very fun and whimsical Halloween inspired collection. Nothing scary here, these are just fun images, a little ghost. We have some pumpkins with some really fun patterns, some different title options. So this is the coordinating sticker sheet. And this pack has some unexpected color combinations that I'm actually pretty excited about. I never would have thought to pair pinks with Halloween, but they've done it and it's awesome. So let's take a look at the paper pack. Each pattern paper is double-sided and you get two of each. So we have these cute little, you could totally fussy cut these out if you wanted to, or use it as a whole pattern. And the other side are these cute little pink ghosts, which we'll look at here in a second. This word phrase paper, I love. I absolutely love it when they do this. You can cut these out and they just really help create the feel on your layout. You know, you can kind of stagger them, stack them up like little word sentiments. I love the way that looks and so this is really fun. I will definitely be cutting into this one. On the other side is a black with a white star. And then we have this orange gingham. Who doesn't love plaid? This would be great for fall um, papers or pages as well as Halloween. On the other side, spiders. So here you can see I have the opposite sides of those sheets already flipped over. Lots of fun pattern papers here. You also can get this stamp set. It's called Boo Crew. Everything shaded in this light kind of blue teal color has a coordinating thin cut die. So we have Too Cute to Spook, have a hauntingly happy Halloween, and then little faces that you can put on the ghost. Um, you could probably put those on the pumpkin as well. And you could even put like the hats on the pumpkin or the ghost, that would be super cute. You also get several sheets of these little adorable ghost sequins. They're holographic, and so they really pick up different tones and colors, and they're just adorable. Can you see them there? But yeah, four sheets of those and they're just shiny and super fun. I have this photo of my son taken many, many years ago and he did not ask my permission to do this. He just took a sheet and cut holes in it, but he was so happy with himself. He was pretty little at the time. So he made himself a little scary ghost costume. So I thought, oh, this is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear all this up and we'll get started. I'm going to bring in my Versamat to work on, and I wanted to show you there's also cardstock. There's three sheets each. There's the mulberry color, and they're double-sided, so there's a lighter shade on the opposite side. You can really see it in this nectarine color here, but lots of cardstock, black, ballerina, mulberry, and nectarine. I'm going to put a couple removable glue dots on my Versamat just to hold my paper in place. Some people like to use washi tape. Whatever you have works well. I pulled these pattern paper to use and then I think I'm going to accent with that mulberry because I think it's just so fun. So I'm just kind of trying to get a visual before I cut into these papers. It's a brand new paper pack and sometimes making that first cut you're kind of like eh, I don't know but I'm just laying them out and I think that's going to work so I'll go ahead and trim those down. Now this pattern paper I did mat on black cardstock. When you have white pattern disappearing into white cardstock I really like that definition dividing the edge from the background. Since there's a lot of black in the background of my photo, I'm gonna pop that with the mulberry here. And I love to sand this cardstock and bring out that white corn, add a little distressing and more color. So I went ahead and did that off camera and then we'll layer this onto black and then I will go ahead and layer my photo on top of that. I know I've definitely seen like darker, deeper purples with Halloween colors, of course, but this mulberry is just kind of fresh and fun. I love the, the brightness it brings. I'm laying down my all-purpose mat because I'm gonna do a little bit of ink blending. Sometimes when you have a lot of bright patterns, you can kind of tone them down with darkening the edges. This is the Black Soot Distress Oxide. And you guys have seen me just use, you know, regular um, water-based dye ink to go around the edge, which you totally can do that as well. But this gives just a little bit different look and we're just creating this kind of shading coming in from the edges. Distress Oxide inks are just really fun to play with. They're just creamy and smooth, and, and if you haven't tried them, you definitely should. 
Before I wind up with black soot all over my project, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up. And these all-purpose mats have a silicone coating on the top side, so they wipe up super easy. Now, I thought it'd be fun to bring in a little strip of this ballerina paper here, and I'm going to tear the edge. I'm doing tiny little strokes because I want a pretty straight tear all the way across, and that allows me to get a, you know, a more accurate tear and have a little more control over it. Now I've already gone ahead and removed several images from the coordinating sticker sheet and I took my anti-static powder pouch and just patted the back to remove the adhesive and now I can use them like die cuts. You can use wax paper, you can cut them out of the sticker sheet. I just like to move them around and experiment before I commit. Now you'll notice I'm going to strategically place my title so we have this Happy Halloween banner underneath on the pattern paper that we've incorporated to make it look like it's part of the title. I want to bring in some of these fun pumpkins and of course I've gone ahead and cut up several of these word phrases from this fun pattern paper and you guys know how much I love my tags so I've gone ahead and cut two tags now I'm just taking the ink that's already in the blending tool and quickly going around the edge and I like to use these to kind of highlight my embellishments when you have a pattern paper background the embellishments can kind of get lost and so this is a way to give them some presence and help them stand out. I think those are gonna look pretty cute up top there, but then I thought, ooh, I think it would look really cool if we did some ink blending with this Seedless Preserves color. So I'm just using a pencil to very lightly mark where I want kind of the border, the edge of how far the color to extend, and then I can remove my layers. This is why I never glue things down until I'm 100% sure, because I'm always thinking of doing things like this after the fact. I have ordered the mulberry ink and it's on its way, but the seedless preserves goes really well too. So, and, and like I said, I love to use these for ink blending. So we're just doing a splotch of color up there and then one down here on the lower left corner. And I think you're gonna see how that adds a lot of fun character to the layout here in just a moment. So I always like to put my ink tool down behind my project and then blend out. And that way you're not gonna get any harsh blending lines or anything like that. We'll get our pieces situated back into place, clean this up, and then we're gonna bring in our all-purpose mat one more time. And I'm like, ooh, we've gotta add some shimmer brush. So I have my black shimmer brush here, and then you just need something else to tap it with. And then we're gonna tap, 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 and you can just add as much or as little splatter as you would like. And I really like the way this black looks. And I know you guys can't quite appreciate the sparkle on camera, but not only does it have the black color, but it has that sparkly shine as well. My boys are teenagers now and they don't really dress up. You know, of course they don't go trick or treating. Sometimes they'll dress up and go to parties, but I'm really thankful I am behind on my scrapbooking. Yes, I said it, I'm thankful for that because I still have these fun pictures to scrapbook and maybe they'll tide me over until I have grandkids. So I'm thinking this little ghost looks cute facing into the picture, but this side over here in the lower right hand corner is just feeling kind of left out. It was off balance to me, so I'm moving my embellishment cluster over and then we'll go ahead and place some pumpkins up top. I like to repeat those elements and then I have this little eek word bubble and I thought that was cute up top. Of course, we can't forget about our little word phrases. I love using word stickers and sentiments because they really help tell the story. I mean, we all, you know, some of us aren't so great at journaling and that's when these little phrases really come into play because it's kind of like journaling. I wanted to add a little bit more detail to these tags. So I used a small circle die and then hole punched out the center to create those little black tags there. And then I do want to pop this little ghost up and give him some dimension there. I'm kind of laughing to myself because I mentioned maybe this will tide me over until I have grandkids. Well, being teenagers, my boys are both like, oh, gross. I'm never getting married. We're never having children. Do you guys believe that? I don't believe that. Maybe. I know it's possible, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed that they're just being typical teenage boys. So I have this ribbon left over in my stash and it has this little black and white plaid that goes really well with this collection. So I'm gonna loop this through the top of my tag. And then if you've been watching my videos, you guys know I love to do this. I take a piece of twine, wrap it around the base and then tie that into a little bow. And you can even do a knot, you don't even have to do a bow. And it just adds a lot of fun, um, just interest to the top of your tag. 
I'll do the other tag off camera, and then we cannot forget about journaling. I went ahead and printed it out on vellum. I just run a piece of vellum right through my printer, and since vellum kind of shows adhesive through, I like to use glue dots. That tends to be the least obvious, and wherever I can hide it, I definitely will take advantage of that. So the right-hand side, I'm tucking under my photo. So I put quite a few glue dots back under that upper right-hand corner, and I'm just lining it up, making sure it's straight with the plaid on the pattern paper and then I want to bring in a few of these adorable holographic ghosts so we'll just place a few of these around in each cluster and I thought maybe one over here hiding that glue dot would look good and then just because why not I've got some black and white enamel dots and I thought these little black ones would look really cute kind of um, around each embellishment cluster I'm using I usually do three and I create kind of a little visual triangle around the embellishments as you can see I'm doing right here while I'm looking at this I think it could use just a little bit more something on the lower left hand corner so I'm bringing in this pumpkin and a little mulberry lollipop and we'll layer the holographic ghost over the top and I think you guys can see how that just create or completed that visual triangle and balance the layout I'm giving you a closer look at that ink blending and the tags and how we've printed our journaling on the vellum so that that fun pattern paper can show through as always, everything I used in today's video will be listed in the description box below. I hope you guys were inspired. Here's a few more videos I think you might enjoy. If you're not already a subscriber, I would love to have you join the community. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.